Our collaboration with Davi is something we've just started. It's a really new direction for the lab and it's something we're incredibly excited about. Davi has created an EM data set that basically gives us a new resolution at which we can look at individual neurons and where we can actually see chemical synapses, which basically tells us which neurons are talking to each other. This is the way that we can go in and get a connectome for our neural circuits. What my lab did is we took lots and lots and lots of pictures um, uh, of a fly brain. And so we have a 100 terabyte data set that has 20 million images and each one of these little squares is one individual image. And we've imaged now over 6,000 sections uh, at this very high resolution of four by four by four nanometers. And what you can see are these little dots in here and that's where people have done tracing work. And my lab has done a bunch of work and a few other labs have done work and some of these dots are Gwyneth's and like these ones in here that show these neurons that go from one side of the brain to the other. We're actually spanning the entire fly brain here looking at the connectivity and the circuitry that binds both of these um, giant fiber neurons together. Davi and his team have taught me how to trace neurons. This was something that I had never done before. And it's one of the great things about Genelia that we have colleagues in different areas that really are able to share their expertise with us and enable us to do new things like this. Today, what we were doing is we were going through and we were checking my tracing. I'm a novice. We were examining exactly which kinds of synapses we thought were stronger or weaker and trying to understand how neurons in our circuit are actually wired up together and connected with each other. It was interesting showing the data to Davi because I had actually observed something that he hadn't seen before. So I noticed when I was tracing these neurons yeah. that um, for those particular visual input neurons, right. the cell body tether seems to um, travel along the same path as the axon. We noticed that the neurite that connects the cell body to the neuron actually abuts the axon in a way such that they travel together. It's a big, long, it's a split, is it, that real? It turns out all of them do that. Really? They all come back in through the same channel, basically. Uh, what do you mean to come me, back? Oh, they... The, so the cell hmm. body comes back along that hmm. same pathway. And so, so they're the same lineage then, I guess. But it's so, it's very... Well, this, is, a, the, this is the cell yeah, body, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, so this, it comes in, it branches, and then it travels back along its own mm -hmm. and route. I was, they're so close, they're touching for most of that way. I was actually wondering if they were stuck together by some kind of surface. Um, but you'll see, see it's true on, yeah, on all wow, of these different ones. Yeah, wow, look at that, ones. that's real, huh? And now that I know how to look for it, that's it's pretty really easy cool. to find, because I can find two profiles that travel together, and then I know one of them is the cell body tether. Wow, that's very interesting to me. <laughs> uh. And it was just kind of a new anatomical morphology that neither of us had seen before. Um, but was interesting, and so we were speculating as to what its meaning might be. And so what I'm trying to figure out now, <laughs> all of those ones in the, yeah. in the visual um, system, whether those are actually the same cell type. So our speculation is that the particular positioning of how this neuron grew has to do with the development of the fly's brain. It's probably a, a developmental um, accident, as it were. So it's sort of like locally very inefficient in terms of wiring, um, but it suggests a common developmental path to make these connections, and it's not something I'd seen before in the, in the neurons that I'm studying. So that was pretty neat. It's really a great place where these um, different expertise come together in order to be able to do things that no one lab could do by itself. My lab acquired these data. Um, a different lab at Genalia, Albert Cardona's lab and Stefan Salfeld's lab, and part of a big consortium in the building built this software toolkit. Another piece of Genalia stitched and registered all these data. And so the borders are not always entirely clear because it's just a close collaboration, but Gwyneth put all of the clicks on these data that generated these 3D models. My lab generated the data. Rick Fetter cut the sections. I mean, it's a, there's probably 25 people in the building involved in what you're seeing here. Genelia is really a great place for collaboration. It's wonderful to have people with such a diverse expertise in the building and to have a community where we are all happy and willing to share with each other to try to make the most rapid scientific progress.